Welcome back to the channel, y'all. We are going on a dangle mission today to get some meats. So recently I saw a video of someone catching one of these, putting it in a cooler, and I didn't see them actually try it, but we're going to try it. We are going to try to get one of these buffalo and see if they're any good. So here in Texas, probably one of the easiest ways to get one of these is with a bow. We have a lot of them. Last time I went bass fishing, in fact, I did see a lot. However, they will hit bait. And it's been a long time since I've caught one on a rod and reel, but it is fun. They put up a good fight. So we are going to attempt to try to make some bait and then catch them on that bait, put it in the cooler and see how these things taste, man. I don't know. I don't know about it. Quick chicken check on our way out, guys. We lost a bird. We lost a chick. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. I just counted today and we got seven. Had eight the other day, so I don't know. Something got one. All right, y'all, I think we got all the tackle that we need. We'll go through it when we get to the water, but first up, stopped at our little local gas station. Got ourselves a loaf of bread. This is uh, honey wheat, Nature's Own honey wheat. I want a lot of gluten in here. I want this thing to be sticky. Oh yeah, good stuff. Don't get that, any of that organic natural stuff. That'll just fall off the hook. You want all the, you want all those things that aren't good for you, because it sticks to the hook. And I got me some, I got me some bug. This is actually called bug juice. This is called bug juice. I mean, first ingredient: high fructose corn syrup, concentrate grape juice. You know, yellow, blue, red number, all of it questionable if it's actually got vitamin D or vitamin C in here but the point is this stuff is uh, is real sticky and I'm gonna put this with the bread I've been scouting for the last 10 minutes just driving around in a park and I think I found a good area so last time I was here in my boat I actually came by this spot and on on the side imaging and on live scope I saw a lot of carp a lot of carp and potential buffs out in here. So right out here in the middle, I haven't seen anything cruising. Lots of bluegill beds, but nothing cruising around that I could get with the bow. All right, so we're gonna take our bread. So I've got just three pieces right here. I'm gonna start breaking it up, putting it into a little pot. Okay, now that we got all our pieces broken up, we're gonna squeeze a little of this bug juice in there. Don't wanna get it too saturated. I'm gonna put a little bit in at a time. I'm just gonna start mixing and smashing. And preferably do this the night before, put it in the fridge. And what you want is just a big gooey ball of bread. Okay, yeah, this is the, about the consistency that I want. There's, there's no liquid in here, all right? I smell that high fructose corn syrup. Just wanted to get it where it's nice and uniform, doesn't have any big cracks in it. And we can hydrate with our juice from there. All right, now let's get some rods rigged up. And this is a medium powered rod. You want something kind of light because these fish have a very soft mouth. And you want to be able to uh, compensate for that. You don't want to rip into them. They're pretty sneaky the way they suck this bread in. And they're also pretty smart. Take some 10 pound mono. And then we're going to grab a small hook. You want a small hook for this. A finesse hook. This is literally like a drop shot or wacky rig style hook. Something they can suck into that little tiny mouth. Even though they're big, they got a small mouth. It's probably about two foot of line. I'm going to take that tag end right there. I'm going to lay it over the shank of the hook. I'm going to take this 
main line. I'm just going to wrap it probably about 10 times around the hook shank over that tag end. I'm going to come back through the bottom of the hook, go up through the eye on the hook point side, pull that tight. Now that's a, a snelled hook. The reason snelling is a good idea is it will sort of turn that hook for you. Fish grabs it, so all right. Now we got our two rigs. Good to go. Good size wad. Completely covering that hook. Squeeze and pack. God, oh, I just got slammed right there. Probably took my bait. Oh my gosh. In my experience, the carp will, they'll tap at it a bunch of times. We'll get a bunch of soft taps, almost look like bluegill. Catfish is just, they smoke it. I think that's what just happened right there. Could have been an angry buffalo, I don't know. Yeah, that bait's starting to get stickier and stickier. That's good. Just saw my line slowly move, look like a carp bite. Come on, take the dope. One right there. They're in my bait trail. It's happened to me twice now where my line just gets smoked and I come up with nothing. So I'm gonna switch spots and on the way over, I'm gonna get a little something that I think will solve this uh, disappearing issue. Alrighty, fishing freaks, new locale. And on the way over here, stopped and got ourselves some corn kernels. So I'm gonna put me a few kernels on. Go ahead and just kinda get the juices flowing. To go with a three kernel offering with a pinch of dough. All right, let's see if that gets nommed on. There we go. I just watched a monster buffalo come up and roll to the surface. They are definitely in here, y'all. So that corn is soaking down there. We've got two lines out, one is out probably 15 to 20 foot. The other one's probably sitting in eight to 12. Getting a bite here, guys. Oh, no. Still getting bit. Definitely feels like a carp or buffalo bite. Bite alert. There it goes. Oh, fish is taking it. Fish is taking it. We got him. We got him. Here we go. Fish on. Fish on, I lost a shoe, I gotta go grab it. Oh my gosh. Big 
big fish alert. Oh, it's a catfish. Oh, it's a catfish. We'll take him though. Swallowed. Well, I definitely am not going to let that fish go. in my cooler and I'm gonna grab some more tackle Whew. Shoo, man well that was unexpected but hey we got some dinner one filet each for me and Steph that's a good that's a good dinner date right there romantic channel catfish maybe a little Coors light Come on now. That was crazy because my rod got walloped. And then I thought I was done. And I picked up the the rod and the fish came back, started nibbling it like a carp would, just barely getting it. Alright, we'll go back to that same hole. fresh corn. Come on, baby. That one was just getting bit. Just little taps. I think that's carp. Just takes one, y'all. Just one good nibble and we'll have five pound fillets. Hopefully. That's all it takes. I'm sweltering out here. 97 degrees. Trying to catch a buff. Holy crap, guys, there's one right here. There's one right there feeding. I may try to go sneak in and get my bow. Just tap this guy. I mean, he's right here, 10 feet in front of me. That's for sure a buffalo, too. Okay, I'm gonna go try to get my bow. I'll be right back. Oh God, I just saw the rod get smoked. Rod got absolutely smoked. All right, Let's see if the buff is still here. He's probably gone. Oh no, he's still there. He's still there. One of the poles just got smoked. thing.
at full penetration. He might get off. He's very close to getting off. Alright, we gotta scoop him. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, he came off, he came off, he came off. There he goes. Alright, guys. Holy crap. There's a big buff. There's a big buff right there. Holy cow, I barely got him. I barely got penetration with the bow. I'm surprised I got him in. Whew. Well guys, there we go. That completes our mission. I don't think we're gonna need any more fish than that right there. That's a huge one. All right. Let's reel lines in and let's head in. Oh, bait definitely got taken on this one. Whew. It was going off. I was running, trying to get to that pole. And I said, screw it. Let me just take the bow shot and be done with it. Oh my gosh. Must have stunned that dude because he just, just quit. Oh my goodness, look at this giant doll. That thing is bigger than my bow. I can't wait to see what the fillets look like on it. Let's take it back home. Let's slap the sides off of it. Heck yeah, boys, we were able to get it done with the bow. You know, I was fully prepared for rod and reel experience. I wanted to catch them that way, but I'm glad I threw this in the truck. It was so random because both those spots, I hadn't seen any carp cruising around. I'd seen a couple roll out in the middle. Not deep, but nothing up shallow. So I was thinking I wasn't gonna have an opportunity with a bow, but I kept it in the truck just in case. This thing just appeared out of nowhere, right in front of me. And I was it allowed me to run all the way to the truck, come back and get it. Alrighty y'all, it has been a few hours. The fish has been chilling. I'm gonna let that meat firm up a little bit. It's always easier to clean. This is the moment of truth right here. We're gonna see what the inside of one of these looks like. This, let's just talk about this fish for a little bit. This is a smallmouth buffalo, okay? Gooey, gooey guy. That's a smallmouth buffalo. That's the most common one we have here in Texas. We're gonna attempt to clean this with standard fillet knives. It flies, they're so attracted to this thing, it's crazy. I've actually got two knives. I got a new knife a few months ago. It's in MagnaCut. Have you guys ever heard of that steel? Uh, I've got a few knives in the MagnaCut steel and just bushcraft knives, and it's incredibly um, sturdy and keeping its its sharpness. So I'm gonna see how it's gonna do with this thing. But it, honestly, this thing is so big that yeah, I almost need a sword to clean it. So smallmouth buffalo. Not a carp. This is in the sucker family. I, I've called them carp, you know, forever. They just kind of look like a carp. They eat a lot of the same stuff as a carp, but they are a sucker species. And every carp that I have bow stabbed, it's always like red meat. So we're gonna see what the meat is like on the inside of this fish. How edible is it going to be? Where do we need to go in here? Do I need to like scale this dude? Scale this dude up a hair. Got this armor plating going on. All right, so I got some scales out of the way. Now let's go in here. Let's make this cut and see what we got. That is some white meat, you guys. Very white meat. I actually missed a little bit right there. Not totally familiar with the anatomy. Let's actually try to get the fillet knife up in here. Okay, I'm just kind of running this up here. Let's see what happens. Should be past the ribs now. Let's see if we can come out that other side. Got that. God, this is crazy. Meat looks pretty 
decent, quite honestly. Not seeing anything that I'm scared of at this point. That is looking pretty interesting right there. Cutting through these scales, you almost need a hatchet. There we go. All right, this is sort of difficult to get this off of here properly with the size knives that I have here for crappie and catfish. Let's see if we can get this piece off here. The, it's weird, the belly meat actually looks really good. Now there's some red on the back, if you guys can see that. This is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen when cleaning a fish. I got this belly meat and it's twitching in my hand. Uh, this fish was dead. It's almost like there's two different, or a couple different categories of meat. This is, that's very interesting. The belly meat looks very good. Now we get into the midsection of the fish here. I'm feeling bones. Feeling lots of little pin bones. That's not fun. That's not what you want right there. This fish obviously requires some extra techniques. So right off the bat, I'm gonna give it a low score for that. This meat is just flat out full of dang bones. They are a bony, bony fish. All right, there is a small section, not full of bones. We're done with the fish. I just wanna show you the edge because the magna cut definitely got dinged. Chopping through those bones. Rolled the edge over right here. It's pretty dull. Hi, Ben. So we're gonna need to resharpen that. So that's my first time cutting through bones with magna cut steel. It definitely will get dinged. Just FYI. So we're gonna mix up some seasonings. I got some all purpose, some cornmeal. We're gonna add a little Critter Glitter Cajun in here. Spice it up. There's not enough, I feel like, to bake. So we are gonna go to the fry. All right, let's add our fish. I'm most excited about these belly meat pieces. I honestly think those just look fantastic. So I'm gonna get those out first. Look at that big boy right there. All right, we'll put those in and shake it. It's covered nicely. Now we're gonna put it in the grease. In this case, avocado oil mixed with butter. All right, fish and freaks, let's get it poppin'. Pop the next one in here. Initial piece, y'all. The rib area. Doesn't look great. It's not falling apart. Typically I can tell when a fish is done when it starts to flake apart, but this meat isn't exactly flaking apart. Feel it's too hot now. Ugh. It is not going well. Let's be brave. Taste your piece. Oh, it's like chewy. It's scary. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna deem that not edible. This belly meat is so chewy, it's like a scallop. Yeah, nope, can't do that. It's very smoky in here. Oh, yeah, there she blows. Apologize.
All right, we just set off the alarm in the house with some smoky buffs. No, that's it. Thank you. Bye bye. Wow, not an ad for Simply Safe, but they're on it. Probably banned from cooking in here for quite a while. It's okay. So we had to uh, cook the fish a little more than anticipated. I'm very unfamiliar with this texture. Here's what I'm gonna say about the final product. And the initial product. Probably the worst fish that I've ever had to deal with. Uh, after I had cleaned it, the muscles were still twitching. When I was putting the fish in the batter, the muscles were still twitching. I don't know how you get rid of that. Uh, this thing probably needed to be on ice for a lot longer than just five or six hours. Guys, I, I don't think this is edible. All right, here's a nice golden crispy. We're gonna attempt to break it apart and that, I, that's putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm gonna. This is a prime piece right here. Prime piece. Oh God, it does not look good. It does not look good. Break open one of these bad boys. Bones all up in it. Scallop texture. Try it. Sucks. You can just break it apart, there's bones just hanging out everywhere. There's not a good piece in here. That's fatty. The texture is like fish that's not cooked. So if you were to bite into a fish that you would not put it in the grease yet, that's the texture. The flavor is um, slightly gamey. Even though it's a white meat, I'm just not getting a good, I mean guys, this is like, this is like rubber, pulling this apart. If you like eating tough, grassy tasting scallops, this is probably your fish, but if you like really delicious flaky fish, uh, this is not it. I, 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 will, I will not eat this. It is terrible. And I've eaten some crusty fish, but it is not good. I'm honestly shocked because I've, I've seen people taking these. I've never seen like the finished product of them eating them. Uh, I know Flair tried one. He told me it, it was decent. Maybe that was a small one. This is terrible. I shot a huge one and it was, uh, the texture was the craziest fish I've ever tasted out of freshwater. Plus, I've never seen the muscles twitch post filet for that long. We're talking hours and hours and hours later. That is uh, disturbing. And I will most likely not be eating another one of these unless it is a severe survival, survival situation. So thank you guys for tuning in today for this culinary and dangling experience. Um, I think I'm going crappie fish, fishing next to make up for this because that's just right, right down terrible. But appreciate you guys. Go ahead and smash that like button for the effort. And as always, I will see you on another great outdoor adventure.